can also buy our favorite toys from www.puntunkids.com. Link is in the description. TikTok star Gattu. Dad called Gattu. Gattu, come here. Gattu came. Yes, Dad. Did you install TikTok on my mobile? Chinky came and said to Dad. Yes, Dad. Brother uploads video on TikTok. He even has 2 million followers too. Sorry, Dad. I didn't tell you before because I thought you would get angry. Hey, there is nothing to be sorry about. Showcasing your art is not a bad thing. But you should have told me about it. Anyway, show me what kind of videos do you make? Do you really want to see? Here, you hold the mobile. I will act. Dad clicked on TikTok app and started shooting Gattu's video. Johnny, Johnny, yes, Papa. Eating sugar, no, Papa. In this way, Gattu's video is made. Now, I will edit this video and upload it. Then you see how amazing it is. Gattu edited the video and uploaded it. See, Dad. I just uploaded the video and it's already getting likes and comments. Already 450 views in just a minute. By the evening, I will get 1.5 lakh views. After hearing this, Gattu started making videos all the day and started uploading it on TikTok. Within a few days, Gattu became so addicted to it that he forgot about everything else. Gattu, let's go. Tiffin is ready. Hurry up and eat your breakfast. You have to go to school. Mom, give me a minute. I'm coming. Gattu dear, give me my mobile. I have to leave for the office. Just a minute, Dad. Looks like you are addicted to TikTok. Give me my mobile and eat your breakfast. Gattu gave the mobile to Dad. But he was upset about it. Gattu went to school. The teacher was teaching. But he was lost in his thoughts. His friend, Hari, asked in soft voice, What happened, Gattu? Bro, I have lots of followers now, but number of views are not growing. Yesterday, I had only 50,000 views. You won't get more views if you upload videos of poems on TikTok. Start making videos with film dialogue, like I do. I get more than 2 million views. What are you saying, bro? I have to do the same thing. Teacher caught Gattu and Hari talking. And he told them to go out of the class. Oh, TikTokers, out of my class. Gattu and Hari went out of the class. While having a dinner, Dad asked, Where is Gattu? He is making video. He is not eating properly, nor he is studying. Dad, today teacher asked him to leave the class. He was talking about TikTok even in the classroom. Wait, I will go and check. Gattu was shooting on a film dialogue. I will forget you. This will not be able to And you will That's when Dad came. Gattu, come on, have dinner. Just a minute, Dad. Did you not hear what I said? Gattu went to eat dinner after hearing father's order. Next day, it was Sunday. Gattu thought. Today is a holiday. Today, I will make at least four videos. Now, I have even more views. Gattu picks up dad's mobile that is being charged and click on TikTok. But it does not open. What happened? Did father delete my TikTok account? Gattu came into sitting room and asked dad. Dad, did you delete my TikTok account? Not just yours, but crores of Indians' accounts have been deleted today. What are you saying? You didn't watch the news? Government has banned TikTok and lots of other Chinese apps. Thank God, that's a relief. What has the government done? I had 8 million followers and had lots of views. How am I going to survive without TikTok now? Don't be stupid, Gattu. Artists should not be a slave of any medium. I know that you are a good artist. But don't be slave of TikTok. Don't limit your art for views and likes. Otherwise, you will never become great. Then what should I do, Dad? This is age to learn something. 
focus on studying right now present your art in school competitions you will get real audience and followers there tiktok is just an illusion i'm so sorry dad i get your point now now i will work hard and become a great actor i will find a way to reach my real audience and my followers too in this way get to got rid of the tiktok addiction value of words long time ago a family resided in a city and in that family 7 year old aditi and 8 year old aditya lived with their parents being siblings nature wise both the kids were completely different from each other aditi used to speak very less as compared to his sister who is very talkative Sometimes she used to talk on those matters too where there was no need. Mom, today teacher ask questions one by one from each and every student. And when my turn came, I answered the question correctly before she could even ask. Still, I don't know why she gave me only 5 marks out of 10. Her mother used to explain to her a lot that she should speak less. Aditi, child, We should talk less and sweet. If we talk a lot, then people tend to ignore our talks. But she always said to her mother that, "Mom, I don't talk much. Rather, I don't even know how to talk more. I am always at loss of words." One day, their aunt came to stay at their house and brought toys for both the kids. Aditya. This robot is for you. And Aditi, here is your doll. Aditi quietly kept his robot. Thank you, Auntie. But Aditi, as always, spoke up. Auntie, why did you bring this doll for me? I already had this one. If you had asked me before, then I would have told you that which doll I want. <laughs> It's fine, Aditi. Next time I'll ask you. What is the need to ask? I will go to the market along with you and there I will select a pretty doll of my choice for me and then you can buy it for me. It's fine. It's fine. Come, let's go now. Uh, uh now. At present I'm very tired. Ha, huh? no issues if you're tired now. But tell me the time when you're going to take me to the market. What? Aditi, do not disturb your aunt. Come sister. I'm not disturbing her. I'm just talking to my aunt. Next day, her aunt and mother were talking to each other. This time during vacations will go to Nainital. And then Aditi came there as always started talking. We went to Nainital last year. And before that, we went to grandma's house in Dehradun. Have you ever been to Dehradun? Yes, once I went. We have been there many times. You know, we go there often. You also must go there. That place looks more beautiful during summers. I'm sure you love that place. Come, sister. We shall go to the kitchen now. And after that, you should go to Nainital too. I'm sure you like it there. That night, Aditi's father too is talking to her aunt. Sister, so nice you came here. Being busy, I didn't have time to visit your place. No issues. I knew you wouldn't be able to take out time from work. That's why I came here. Then Aditi came there and said, "Dad, I need to talk to you." Not now, Aditi. Presently I'm talking to your aunt. It's fine. First you talk to auntie. Saying this, Aditi sat there and waited for their talks to get over. Her dad and aunt started talking. I have heard you brought toys for kids but didn't brought anything for me. <laughs> I I brought a gift for you too. Keep this. This is your gift. This shirt is so nice. By watching this, Aditi could not control herself and interrupted them in between. Wow, Daddy, your gift is really very nice. Auntie, you came up with such a wonderful gift for Daddy. This means you really have the knowledge of buying wonderful gifts. Yes, your aunt is an expert in this matter. 
But I can't understand why she brought such a small doll for me. Dad, you know, Aunt came up with a doll for me. I had the same doll with me. Therefore, I said to her that she should bring me another present which is different. And then Auntie said the next time she would ask me before buying the gift. Same thing went on for the next few days. Aditi, helpless due to her habit, without any reason, used to say something or the other. You eating so late? I ate my meal a long time ago. Are you sleeping so early? I sleep very late. Why you wake up so late? I wake up early every day. Her aunt was very angry on her, but rather, she chose to keep quiet. And then, after three days, when aunt was about to leave, she asked the kids. Now tell me kids, next time, what should I bring for you? Auntie, you please come soon. We'll go together to the market and we will purchase many toys that are dear to me. Auntie, please bring some sweets for us. Sure, Aditya. I will bring sweets for you. Saying this, the aunt went. But Aditi didn't like this at all. With a sad heart, she told her mother, Mom, aunt didn't say anything to me and accepted Aditi's demand instantly. Her mom explained her and said, Aditi, that's why I always told you to talk less. With short and sweet words, people give value to your words. And if we speak much, then no one gives value to us. Aditi understood her mother's words. She said, You're saying it right, mother. From now on, I won't speak without any reason. Like this, Aditi got rid of her habit of speaking unnecessarily, and she started speaking less. So children, we get a lesson from this story that we should speak less and sweet. With this, people give value to our world. Babies make hope. A very long time ago, there lived a family in a city. A seven-year-old named Baby used to live with her parents. Baby's mother was very beautiful and she used to do wonderful makeup too. Baby was very fond of her mother's makeup. While seeing her mother, she always used to think, that I will look so pretty in the makeup. What she told to her mother. Mom, I want to apply makeup just like you. Mother became angry after hearing her words and scolded her. Baby, makeup is meant for elders. Therefore, you won't apply it till you grow up. Baby listened and agreed to her mother's word. But her focus was on her mother's makeup. One day, in school too, the class teacher told the students, Tomorrow there is a parents teacher meeting in school. Therefore all of you will come along with your parents. I will hand over the report of your studies to your parents. Baby was happy with teacher's words. Tomorrow I'll come to school with my mother. Happily she came to her house and told about parents teacher meeting to her mother. Mom, the parent teacher meeting is there in school tomorrow. And therefore, you have to go to the school with me tomorrow. The teacher will give you reports of my studies. Okay, baby. I will come with you to your school tomorrow. I expect teacher will not complain against you. Oh, no, mom. The teacher will not complain against me. Next day, baby got ready in morning and went to mother's room. Mom, are you ready? Yes, baby. I'm just getting ready. Saying this, in front of the dressing table, her mother started applying makeup. And as always, happily, baby kept watching her mother. After applying her makeup, her mother picked her handbag and they both went for school. After reaching there, as soon as mom and baby stepped inside the classroom, all students thought her mother to be a teacher and wished her good morning. Good morning, teacher! Good morning, teacher. Good morning, teacher. I suppose everyone's thinking as if my mom is a teacher. After all, my mom is looking so beautiful. 
As soon as they stepped forward, another mother with her child came near them and said to baby's mother, Teacher, I'm Bunty's mother. I have to make a complaint against him. Baby's mother stopped her and said, No, I'm not a teacher over here. Like you, I also came to have report about my child. Oh, you are looking so pretty in your makeup, therefore I thought you must be a teacher. Saying this, Bunty's mother went outside the classroom. Baby was very happy after listening about her mother. And then Baby, accompanied by her mother, went to her teacher. Teacher also loved her mother's makeup very much. And she also started talking about her makeup. Baby's mother, you're looking so pretty in this makeup. Thank you. And she forgot to talk about Baby's reports. And then Baby reminded her. Teacher, you forgot to give reports to my mother. Oh yes, I forgot. I shall give you reports of her studies to you. After that, the teacher gave reports to her mother and they came back home. After listening to so many praises about her mother's beauty, baby wasn't able to keep herself calm. Now by applying makeup, I have to be as beautiful as my mother. After saying this, baby started thinking and then she had an idea. Idea! I will secretly apply my mother's makeup and then surprise her by showing her my beautiful made-up face. Thinking this, she came out of her room. She saw her mother was working in the kitchen. Crossing the stairs, she went to her mother's room. Mom keeps her makeup box in drawer of her dressing table. She opened the drawer and took makeup box out of it. Today, I will also apply makeup like my mom. And then, she started applying the makeup. One by one, she applied lipstick, nail polish, foundation on her face. And in the meantime, she saw lamp black in her mother's makeup box. Slam black is mom's favorite. Mom applies it every day on her face. I should also apply it. But while applying by mistake instead of eyelashes, lamp black went into her eyes and she started having burning sensation in her eyes. Oh, my eyes! Lamp black got into my eyes! She ran towards the bathroom and washed her eyes with water. With this, lamp black along with other makeup spread on her face and went into her eyes. Due to burning sensation in her eyes, she started crying loudly. Oh, 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 my eyes! Mom, my eyes are burning a lot! <laughs> After hearing her crying, her mom came near her. By washing makeup on her baby's face, she asked her surprisingly, What happened to your face, baby? <laughs> I was applying makeup on my face just like you! <laughs> Haven't I said you to stay away from the makeup? Sorry, Mom. All I wanted to do is surprise you. After watching her condition, her mother first wiped her face and then cleaned her eyes properly. Then explained her and said, Baby, makeup is meant for only elders. Kids like you have a very sensitive skin. And makeup has a lot of chemical which can damage skin of children. That's why I always asked you to stay away from makeup. And applying makeup requires a lot of practice. Without practicing, this kind of things happens. Finally, baby understood why her mother warned her always to stay away from makeup. She said to her mother, I understood, mom. Now I will apply makeup when I will grow up and that too after practicing. This way, Baby understood an important lesson on makeup. So kids, the moral of this story is that skin of children is very sensitive and therefore they shouldn't apply makeup and after growing up too, should practice thoroughly before applying makeup. The result of stealing Monu always used to handle his toys very carelessly. One day, while playing, he broke his brand new remote control toy car. 
during evening when his parents were having their meal, he went near them and started insisting for a new car. Dad, I want a brand new remote control car. But last week we purchased a new one for you. That car was not good. It broke as soon as I started playing with it. No, Monu. You never take care of your toys. As soon we buy something, you break it. Now you won't get a new car. And you better don't argue with us on this topic. Saying this, his father got up and left from there. Monu was very angry on his parents. Anyhow, he wanted a new car for himself. And then a wicked idea came into his mind. During night, when everyone was sleeping, he went to his parents' room and stole some money. Next day, while coming back from the school, Monu went into a toy shop and purchased his favorite car. Two thieves who were standing nearby saw all of it. They became happy by seeing so much money with a little boy. Oh, what a great day! This boy is such an easy prey for us. Let's go, brother. Both the thieves started following Manu. After some distance, there was a deserted place. By seeing the opportunity, the thieves went near him. Hey, kid. Come on, hand over all the money to us. No, this money belongs to me. But soon this money will be ours. Give it to us fast. By threatening Monu, thieves took all the money from him. And in the middle of this, his car broke. Monu started regretting for what all he did. He put the broken car inside his bag and came back to his home. He thought not to tell anyone about what all happened, otherwise he'll be scolded. What will I do now? I can't tell anything to mom and dad. Otherwise, they will scold me more. But in the house, Monu was about to get some other surprise. As soon as he reached home, his father gifted him a new toy car and said, Sorry, my son. I shouldn't have said no to you. Often kids break their toys. Later, I realized I didn't behave properly. Therefore, for you, I purchased a remote-controlled car. Keep this. Hearing this, Monu started crying loudly. What happened, son? Why are you crying? While crying, he told the entire incident to his parents. I am so sorry, mommy and daddy. I stole money from you and purchased a new car. But, but the thieves stole the money from me and even broke my new car. Monu's parents understood that Monu had got punishment for his deed. Therefore, they forgave him and explained him lovingly. Son, to steal anything is very bad act. Thank God the thieves didn't cause any harm to you. From now onwards, don't ever do this. Monu realized his mistake. He promised never to steal anything. Gachu becomes Netaji. Gatu Chinki were in the school. Mishra sir went out of the class for some work. Taking advantage of this, the whole class was having fun. Then the peon came with a notice book in his hand. Hey kids, calm down. Where is Mishra sir? He has gone out. That is why we are having fun. Hey, dance guys. The children started having fun again. And the peon fell into thinking, Mishra sir is not here. What should I do with this notice? Then an idea came into his mind. Hey kids, calm down. Tell me, who is your Netaji? Gattu. When the children started shouting Gattu's name, the peon said, Come Netaji, the notice is for Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose's birth anniversary. Read it for the class. Gattu came in front and started reading the notice book. That is when Mishra sir came and saw Gattu standing in front and asked, Brother Hari, are you teaching the kids? Oh no sir, tomorrow is Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose's birth anniversary. Here is the notice and you are not in the class. So I asked the children, who is your leader? 
The children said Gattu. Hence Gattu is reading it. If this is the case, then start Netaji. And Gattu started reading. Tomorrow, twenty third of January. On the birth anniversary of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, all the children will enter the ground to greet them at seven in the morning. After reading, Gatu even signed his signature on the notice book. So the pion got happy. Yes, Netaji, that's more like it. The pion went away after saying this, but Mishra sir was looking at Gatu and thinking something. Tomorrow is Netaji's birth anniversary. And this Gattu also acts like a leader for the kids. Tomorrow, if Gattu is presented as Netaji at the greeting ceremony, and Chinki is, oh, then there will be four moons in the greeting ceremony. Mishra sir was very happy, and said to Gattu Chinki, Gattu Chinki, you both come with me to the headmaster's cabin. It was the morning on 23rd January. All the children reached the school to greet Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. Children, today January twenty third is the birth anniversary of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. Give me blood, and I will give you freedom. Netaji, who rode like this, continued to fight the Britishers for freedom till the last drop of his blood. Today we are able to breathe in freedom, in India, due to the great revolutionaries like Netaji. I request our headmaster Pandeji. To worship the statue of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. All the students and teachers stood up. The headmaster Pandey offered the idol of Netaji with necklace of flowers and greeted them. Everybody started to clap and then started down. Then Mishra sir said, "Don't say it, don't say it. Everyone keep standing because now Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose himself is coming in front of you with his army." Hearing this, all the attendees were stunned and started looking around. Then the bugle and band started playing. When the attendants looked back, Gatu was coming dressed as Netaji. Chinki right behind Gatu, and the rest of the kids were coming in the army attire. The band was at the back. Seeing this unique entry of Netaji, all attendees started to applaud. Gatu and the army came in front. And stopped. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose is present among us. Although Gatu is playing the role of Netaji, but Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose lives in the heart of every Indian. Therefore, we have to call Gatu as Netaji too. Today, no chief guest will come, and there will be no long lecture. Today, your Netaji himself will meet you face to face. I request Netaji to address you all. Gatu dressed as Netaji came in front of Mike, and then Gatu said, "My dear countrymen, I am your Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. Kissing this soil, I bow to all of you. You are fortunate that all of you are citizens of independent India. To achieve this freedom." Along with me, many people have sacrificed their lives, and then we got the independence. Now that we have the freedom, remember that this inheritance should be safely presented in the hands of future generations. No one should take it away and push you into the deep abyss of slavery. That is why. Every one of you has to become very responsible. Therefore, establish unity and righteousness in our soil and brighten the name of the country. Jai Hind. Hearing this, all the attendants started clapping. It was a raining applause for two minutes. When the thrust of the applause decreased, Mishra sir said, "You have just heard Netaji. I hope." You have understood Netaji too, and must have decided to follow the path shown by them. With this hope, today's ceremony ends. Jai Hind! As soon as the ceremony was over, all the attendees started praising Mishra sir and Gatu Chinki along with their classmates. Started taking selfies with Gatu Chinki. 
the the birth anniversary of netaji subhash chandra bose became truly successful and got to chinki's school red colored car long time ago six years old got to lived in a city with his parents and grandfather he had a friend named bunty whose father was very wealthy Often he used to pamper Bunty by bringing new toys for him. Whereas Gatu's parents were very poor, they didn't have that much money with them to present Gatu with new toys. Therefore, Gatu had only one old toy car with him. One day, while returning from school, suddenly on the way, Gattu saw a beautiful red-colored car near his house. After seeing the car, he thought, Oh wow! This car is so beautiful! Whose is this? He went near the car and picked it up. Then he looked here and there, but nobody was around. There's no one here. So for the time being, I shall keep it with me and when its owner will come searching for it, then I will return this toy to him. Thinking this, he took the car with himself. Now after returning from school, he started playing with it every day. And with time, got to forgot that this car doesn't belong to him. Like this, many days passed. And one day, when he was sitting outside his house, two kids named Chintu and Pintu were passing from there. You know, Pintu, my father bought me a very beautiful red-colored car, but don't know where I've lost it. You've lost it? But how? I don't know. I was going to my uncle's house from this way only. But when I reached and checked my bag, I found it was open. Then I'm sure you've lost your car on the way. After hearing their conversation, Gatu understood that the red-colored car which he found outside his house was of Chintu. I completely forgot that one day I have to return this car. With sad heart, he picked up that car and started walking to where Chintu's house. On reaching Chintu's house, he found him sitting outside his house playing with many toy cars of his. After seeing this, he said, Oh wow, Chintu has so many beautiful cars with him. And I have only one car. And that too, so old. Even if I don't return this red car to him, then also it won't make a difference to him. Therefore, I can actually keep this red car with me. Thinking this, he came back to his house with the red car. That evening, as usual, his grandfather was helping him with his homework. Greed is not good at all. Gattu, do you have any idea how bad greed is? No, Grandpa. The meaning of greed is to think someone else thing as if it is your own. But, Grandpa, if we find something very exciting, and if we want that thing to become ours, then what's wrong with it? My child's sin is in the way to make that thing to be yours. How come, Grandpa? You know, first of all, greed occurs in our heart. Then to satisfy that greed which has occurred, we resort to nasty ways. Like you see, stealing. Then with that small greed which has occurred, we become a thief. And you know that greed is, somewhere or the other, starting point of every evil. Therefore, greed in all the sins is the biggest of all. Grandpa is saying it right. It's due to greed only that I kept Chintu's car with me. And I became a thief. Thinking this, he immediately went to Chintu's house and returned that car to Chintu. Therefore, with Grandpa's wise words, Gattu got to know the real meaning of greed and from that moment on, by controlling his greed, he never did anything wrong. Lesson to the Beggar 
A long time ago, in a city, seven-year-old Gattu lived with his parents and grandfather. Every morning, Gattu's grandfather dropped him at the school and used to pick him up in the afternoon. One day, as usual, while his grandfather was accompanying him on the way back from the school, they saw a beggar on the way. Please, sir, give me some money. Since long, I haven't eaten anything. Grandpa, it seems he is very, very hungry. Can you please give him some money? You are saying it right, Gatu. I shall right away give him some money. Saying this, his grandfather took some money out of his pocket and gave it to the beggar. I will always remain thankful to you, sir. After giving him some money, Grandpa and Gatu walked towards their home. Next day too, while they were on their way back from the school, they saw the same beggar again. And on Gatu's request, Grandfather gave him some money. This went on for many days. Next morning, Grandfather was not feeling well. Therefore, Gatu had to go to school alone. That day, school principal came to Gatu's class and told the students. Kids, we shouldn't give any money to the beggars who we find on our way. But principal, sir, if we won't give any money to them, then how come they will eat any food? You are saying it right, Gatu. But the money which they get every day from people won't make any difference in their lives ever, you know. But sir, what should we do then? Rather than giving money to beggars every day, it's better to make them learn any work so that he can earn some money with it and have some good food with that money. Now Katu understood wise ways of his principal and how he should help the beggar. He was on his way back after his school got over and since his grandfather was not feeling well, he met that beggar alone. Oh, little master, where is your grandfather today? Now who will give money to me for my meal? You need not worry at all. Today, I will give you money. You? Yes, me. But in return, you have to do some work for me. All right. Got to take the beggar along with him to his father's toy factory. And after listening everything, his father said, If this is so, then I shall surely help you out. Come. Then he took that beggar near the spare parts of the toys and said to the beggar, Why don't you join these spare parts and make a shirt for me? If you succeed in this, then I will give you lots of money. What? If this is the condition, then I shall right away make a wonderful toy for you. Finally, after many mistakes, Becker made a ship the way he was told. Hope you will like this, little master. Yes, this is wonderful. Wow, so now according to the condition, you are bound to give me lots of money. Yes, here is the money earned by you. Becker was delighted by getting such a big amount. I am highly thankful to you, little master. You gave me such huge amounts of money. I've not given any money to you. This money you have earned by your hard work. What do you mean? I mean that this money is for the wonderful ship you made for me. And now you know how to make toys. Therefore, there is no need for you to beg now. And you have to come daily here to the factory and you shall make the toys in return. My father will give you money. Hearing this, tears of joy came in the beggar's eyes. Thanks a lot, little master. People used to give me money for begging only. But you have taught me to do well. So now there is no need for me to beg. This way, from his wisdom, got to help the beggar and taught him to make toys with which the beggar started earning money and due to his hard work, he stopped begging forever. Reward for Honesty Long time ago, Gattu lived in a city with his poor parents. He studied in second standard. Along with studies, he was very fond of pencils of different designs and colorful erasers too. 
by watching other students having different kinds of erasers and pencils. He also wished to have those with him. Mom, like other students, I want colorful pencils and erasers. But due to lack of money, his parents always refused him. Son, pencils and erasers are too expensive and we don't have that much money with us. Therefore, now Gattu stopped asking his parents for pencil and eraser. But he constantly kept thinking about it. One day, even I will have many wonderful pencils and erasers. Like this, many days passed. One day, while returning from school, on the back road of his school, he saw three different colored pencils and three different colored erasers too. Oh wow! These pencils and erasers are so beautiful! Saying this, he picked them up. Wow! The fragrance from this rubber is nice! But whose are these? He looked around here and there, but he found no one. There's nobody here. I think I should keep these with me. Thinking this, he put all of them in his bag and returned home. During evening, while doing his homework, he remembered. I have those new pencils and aromatic erasers too. Today, I will complete my homework with them. He took out those pencils and erasers from his bag and started doing his homework. And suddenly, his mother came over there. Gattu, what are you doing? Mom, I'm doing my school homework with these pencils and aromatic eraser. But who gave you this pencil and eraser? Mom, when I was returning back from school, on the back road of school, I found three pencils and three erasers. And... You kept all of them? Yes, mom. This is very wrong, Gattu. You shouldn't have picked them up, son. But mom, there was nobody around. I'm sure while returning from school, they must have fallen from someone's bag. You better give them to the principal tomorrow. But mom, these are extremely nice. I always wanted these kinds of pencil and erasers. Gattu, greed can land anyone in trouble, you know. So we should be honest always and if these kind of pencil and erasers are in your destiny, then sooner or later you will have them anyhow. On his mother's explanation, Gattu understood. As you say, mom. Next day, along with those pencils and erasers, Gattu went to the principal's room and he said to the principal, Principal, sir, I found these pencils and erasers in the back road at the school. Please keep them and give these to whoever they belong to. Very nice, Gatu. I appreciate your honesty. Everyone should be as honest as you are. Gatu was delighted in hearing Principal's words and went from there. Principal called the peon and said, Go to each and every class and tell everybody that someone found three beautiful pencils and three aromatic erasers. He has deposited them with me. Therefore, whoever they belong to shall come and collect them from me quickly. Pion did the same. When Pintu, who was classmate of Gattu, got to know about this, he thought, Those are my pencils and erasers. I shall go right now and collect them from Principal Sir. He came out of the class and headed towards Principal's room. While on his way to the Principal's room, he thought, I lost all hopes of getting back my pencils and erasers. But look how easily I'm about to get them back. Thinking this, he went to the principal's room. Principal, sir, those are my pencils and erasers. All right, Pintu. Take your pencils and erasers back. On seeing his lost pencil and erasers, Pintu became greedy and he thought, If I'm getting my pencils and erasers back, then why should I take only three pencils and erasers? I shall take five pencils and erasers. And he said to the principal, Principal sir, these are only three pencils and three erasers, whereas I lost five pencils and five erasers. What? Yes, principal sir, I have been cheated. On hearing this, principal became very angry. Immediately he called the peon. Raju! Call Gattu in my office quickly. Pion called Gattu quickly and principal asked him. Gattu, how many pencils and erasers you found? Sir, 
I found three pencils and three erasers. But Pintu is saying that he lost five pencils and five erasers. So where are the remaining two pencils and erasers? I do not have any idea, sir. Whatever I found, I gave it to you. And then Pintu said, Sir, I am sure he is lying. He must have kept the remaining pencils and erasers with him. No, sir. I am telling you the truth. And if I was supposed to steal pencils and erasers, then I would have kept them all with me. Why would I return you three pencils and erasers? How come we know how you did all this? The principal asked them to keep quiet and said, Gattu is saying it right. If he had to keep those pencils and erasers, then he wouldn't have returned any of those. He would have kept all of them. But sir, my pencils and erasers. Pintu, you lost five pencils and erasers. This means that the pencils and erasers which Gattu found don't belong to you. And since no one still came to claim these pencils and erasers, therefore, being happy with Gattu's honesty, all these three pencils and erasers I am giving now to Gattu. Gattu was delighted on hearing this. He stepped forward and collected all the three pencils and erasers. Thank you, sir. Whereas Pintu was saddened by seeing all this because he knew that in front of him his pencils and erasers were being given to someone else. And he also knew that by telling the truth, now he will be punished severely by the principal. Therefore, he chose to keep quiet at the moment. Oh God, out of greed, what have I done? And this way, Gattu got a reward for his honesty and Pintu got punished for his greed. So children, with this story, we learn that we should never be greedy. My favorite superhero. Long time ago, eight-year-old Pinku and seven-year-old Pinky lived with their parents and grandfather in a city. Pinku was very fond of watching action films. Every day, after returning from school, he used to watch movies of his favorite action hero. Wow, I am also as mighty as my favorite hero. His typical reply on his mother's insistence of having food used to be, I am not hungry at all. But if you will not eat, you will become weak. Mom, I am as mighty as my superhero. It won't make any difference if I don't eat anything. And when his mother asked him to study, then his reply was, There is no need for me to study. Like my favorite hero, I know everything. But everyone has to study. Yes, but I don't need to study. <laughs> this habit of his made his parents very nervous. But what shall we do now? He doesn't listen to us at all. I'm just unable to understand anything. One day, they were upset as usual. Pinku's grandfather came near them and said, What happened? Why both of you are looking so upset? Pinku's parents told him everything. What shall we say, father? Pinku doesn't eat properly, nor does he study properly. Entire day he spends time watching his favorite zero on television. We both tried a lot to explain him, but he doesn't listen to us at all. Please give us a solution. Mm. You do not worry at all. I will do something. Saying this, Grandfather went to Pinku. He saw, as usual, Pinku was watching television. He won't leave watching television like this. I will have to find a solution for this. He went outside near electricity board and disconnected the electricity. By doing this, the electricity of the house was cut and thus the television turned off. Why this electricity has gone now? This action movie was so good. Mom, what happened to electricity? And then Grandfather came near him. What happened, Pinku? Look, Grandpa, I was watching my favorite hero's movie. And suddenly, electricity has gone. So what happened? Let us both play something. No, I am interested in watching that movie only. Well, all right. So shall we have a competition between us? Competition? Yes. A competition. Shall we do a competition like your films, in which there is action also, and you have to use your brains as well? It would be fun doing competition like this. So come, let us start the competition. 
Saying this, the grandfather called Pinky too. Pinky, you also come. Without you, the competition will be incomplete. Pinky agreed to come with grandfather, and then the competition started between them. First of all, we shall see who is more powerful. Come, you should do arm wrestling first. Arm wrestling, and that too with Pinky. <laughs> I will defeat her in seconds. Grandpa, Pinky is correct. He will defeat me within no time. My kids, just start the competition first. But I'm a girl. Gender doesn't matter in games, my child. Come, let's start the competition. An arm wrestling match started between them. Both of them wrestled with full energy and force. And then, finally, Pinky defeated Pinku. I won! I won! <laughs> Pinky was delighted with her victory. But Pinku was shocked after being defeated by Pinky. How come I lost? I can't lose. But now you've lost. And I have won. <laughs> calm down, calm down. Now we'll do a competition of brains. I will ask you both simple three questions. Whoever out of you will give two correct answers will win this competition. You see, Grandpa, I will only win this competition. Your first question is, that how many alphabets are there in A, B, C and D? Pinku was unable to figure out the answer to this question. He didn't know the correct answer. And then Pinky shouted, 26! You are right. Second question is, what are the five vowels? A, E, I, O, U. You are right, Pinky. I won! I won! <laughs> Pinku became very upset after losing to Pinky. Seeing this, Grandfather said, All right, let, let me ask you a final question. So tell me, what is the capital of our nation, India? On this, as usual, before completion of question, Pinky said, Capital of our nation, India, is New Delhi. Absolutely correct. I won, and Pinku lost. <laughs> How come I lost to Pinky? On this, Grandfather explained Pinku by saying, The main reason behind your defeat is that, like you, Pinky doesn't waste entire day by watching action movies on the television. Instead, she eats properly, goes out to play in the park with friends, and concentrate on studies in the school as well. Means? It means that... No one becomes a hero watching their movies. For that, one has to eat properly on time, has to play well, and has to concentrate on studies in school. Your favorite hero as well didn't become hero by watching movies. He too has become hero by eating well on time and by focusing on his studies. And finally, Pinku understood what Grandfather was saying. He said, Grandpa, you are absolutely right. From now, I will eat well on time. We'll study well in school. And whatever time will be left, we'll watch TV and that only. Well done, Pinku. Finally, you understood this. <laughs> and like this, Pinku got rid of his habit of watching television. He now started focusing on his studies and ate well on time too. So kids, we learn from this story that we can't become like our superheroes just by watching television. For that, we have to eat properly, play well and have to focus on studies. If you are liking our videos, then like them, comment them and subscribe.